What's up guys, and today we have a quick little preset breakdown for you guys. I did promise to make this video for my AxeFX users. Now this preset is pretty much a Warren D. Martini lay it down preset. It does sound pretty similar to the record, you know, not exactly because the best thing we can do is always just try our best to get something similar. So there are two main important things that I will talk about in this video. And the first thing is really the amp model because for this particular um, album they did work with an amp designer known as Lee Jackson so he was kind of known for modifying Marshalls essentially so I'm assuming that's what they used the important thing here is that we are uh, modeling uh, a modded 800 here in the X effects so I do think that you know picking the appropriate amplifier probably step one with any preset so the important controls here I would say is just kind of how much gain you're using the master volume the presence can be pretty important the kind of three band EQ uh, it really depends on kind of what pickups you're using I would say you could start Certainly try these settings if they don't work for you you can tweak them now one other important thing is the supply sag so in my opinion this amp model is a little bit hard sounding is the way I would describe it so I would add some uh, supply sag to just make it a little squishier because that is uh, certainly what we hear on the record so when it comes to the cab I just use a, a factory cab uh, the factory cabs are perfectly fine and definitely usable and you can get a great professional sound out of them. I know some people are not fans of the factory uh, cabs and they often buy uh, third party IRs which you can certainly use as well but for my uh, presets and for future presets uh, I will probably likely use just factory ones because it's so much easier to share the preset uh, with people because once you start using third party IRs you often get into kind of copyright stuff where you can't share it and that kind of thing. So I do hear a little bit of chorus. Now this is certainly not the biggest and most important thing about this tone, but I do hear a little bit of, not chorus necessarily, but maybe a type of modulation in the uh, isolated track. I don't exactly know what he's using. Is it a little bit of chorus or uh, maybe like a phaser or flange or something? But I hear that he's using like a little bit of uh, modulation. I could be wrong about that. So again, I'm not uh, saying that this is certainly a big part of the sound. You can certainly try what I used, uh, but I wouldn't say that's very important. Uh, but uh, the reverb certainly is, and I wanted to highlight um, this uh, particular website where it talks about the uh, gear that D uh, Martini was using or has used throughout his like, career. You know, it talks about different amps and, and cabs, and it does mention one important thing, which was uh, to me the Lexicon PCM70. So um, very similar to what, uh, you know, the high quality that we find in the XFX3. So uh, there's a definitely a good amount of reverb on this uh, particular track. So that's uh, definitely a big part of the sound, in my opinion. Uh, so I used, uh, I have the mix pretty high. I I did use a large spring reverb, which is not necessarily what we hear on the record. We hear more of a room reverb. My theory on that is I usually like uh, room reverbs to kind of be, I like to add them in post. I think they oftentimes just sound better when you record uh, a sound with some reverb and then you kind of add a little bit more in post. So that's kind of just the way I do it, but uh, you can certainly do it within the, the preset. You could add another reverb as well. The mix is pretty high. Again, you can play with the mix and, and depending on how much you hear, but I do hear a good amount of it. Uh, the enhance feature is something you can use sometimes. I often, when I'm recording, I do not record with this, so I'll just bypass it, um, but you can uh, use it sometimes and it can make your guitar just sound a little more stereo, especially if you're playing just by yourself. Now, when it comes to the different EQs, uh, these aren't too important uh, to match exactly what I was using. Um, I often use a technique where I go into my DAW and use a match EQ feature where it essentially just analyzes the isolated track and compares it to what you were able to record and just uh, shows you the frequencies that it's cutting and adding to make it sound more similar. So essentially, oftentimes, instead of doing that in post, you can oftentimes uh, do it in post in a way, but and then sort of apply it to the preset itself so you don't end up having to use it in post anymore. So you kind of just um, do it yourself in the preset and then oftentimes uh, just it, get, it gets a, a really good result where you can get it to where oftentimes you're applying the match EQ and it's not really doing much because you've you've already matched the frequency so well using the axe effects and using some of these parametric EQs that it's not really doing much. So essentially that's a technique that I use. You don't have to use that. But again, the two main thing and important things I would say is again, the amp model and the reverb, just using a good quality studio reverb 
that's certainly what we hear on the record. And I'll kind of demonstrate that real quick. I'm going to play the riff for you guys with a kind of good quality reverb and then kind of just play it dry and you'll hear the, the drastic difference that a good quality reverb can make and it's just going to make it sound a lot more like the record. So let's go ahead and listen to these two examples. <laughs> So as you guys heard, the reverb makes a, just a big difference in making it just sound a lot fuller and not so thin. And again, not every classic record or classic tone has a lot of reverb in it. Some tones are very dry, but for this particular song, there is a good amount of reverb on it. So that's definitely a big key to replicating the sound of this song. So that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, pretty simple preset. Again, the most important things are using a appropriate amp model, in my opinion, using a quality IR and of course, quality reverb. And that'll get you very, very close if you know what you're doing. I hope that this video was useful for some of you guys that are fans of this record and I'm happy to share this preset with you guys and hopefully it'll help you guys out. So anyway guys that's pretty much the video. Like the video, comment, and hopefully guys we will see you in the next video.